All right. <clears throat> so today we will look at confidence intervals. And let's remind ourselves, suppose we have y1 to yn, thinking of these as samples, but also <clears throat> as coming from a distribution and being independent. So independent, identically distributed n samples. And suppose on a, a parameter with uh, theta, a parameter associated with the distribution unknown, okay? Unknown. And we would like to estimate theta with the point estimator then let's just, yeah, let's summarize. So for, for a point estimator, what do we have? This is, we usually called it theta hat. This is a function of the sample. And for now, we're just thinking of theta hat as a scalar. but it could be a vector of parameters, but for now, basically we can think of it as a scalar for the problem we're going to do. And um, what do we want? We, we desire, so we want, we like um, E theta hat. We like unbiased estimators usually, and the variance of theta hat to be minimal or at least uh, low. With an interval estimator, we have two numbers. So let's put interval estimator, or you could write confidence interval. So this we'll write as two scalars, theta hat L for lower and theta hat U for upper. Each, so these are estimators, these are two, each a function of y1, yn. So I can think of this as one function, say, from rn to r2, um, and we want, uh, what do we want? We want to make statements like um, the probability, so such that. Probability that the, that the true theta, theta, is between these. is equal to one minus alpha, which is called the confidence level. And for this to make sense, we want this to be near one. So we want alpha to be small. And what do we want? We want narrow intervals with high confidence levels if we can get them. So today is about um, is about a few examples, a few few uh, few different examples of how to compute these, and then what kind of statements you can make, and what kind of interpretations you should have of those statements. So our goals for today: compute and interval estimator or confidence interval to um, interpret really that's it okay because that is the same as these two give you the third one, which is what kind of statements can we make? So usually we want to set 
this level at the beginning and then compute theta L hat, theta U hat based on the sample, based on that at the beginning. Okay, we'll see there's different approaches to this. And some things are quite clear while other things are things you think about for a while. So it's just the way it is. So let's focus more on one for now. Um, so the, one of the keys to one is that, is this idea of a pivotal quantity. Okay, so, so yeah, so to do one, we need to, um, we need to uh, sort of take theta out of the equation. So what do I mean by that? So for one, let's look at some examples. So one, so let's first start with examples of single sample, single observation. All those these quickly can extend as you see. Um, examples of single observation um, confidence intervals. I'm using this interchangeably with interval estimators. Okay, these rely on some way um, of taking the parameter out of the distribution through some relationship. So that probably sounds cryptic, but for example, let's let's list some examples. So suppose y have a single observation, and this is um, say uniform from zero to theta, then how can I take theta out of this distribution um, in another variable? So this could kind of get paired with say x uniform zero one, where, I don't think I have to write where, do I? I can just say, I'll leave these like this, and then we could say, what relationship do these two random variables have? Well, um, you've probably done this at some point. Um, you could say then, then um, theta x has the same distribution as y, right? Then y and theta x have the same distribution. have same distribution. And since they're random, we really can write y, i.e. y equals theta x. Theta is thought of as a constant here, unknown perhaps, uh, but a constant. And y and x are random. And this seems very believable. Um, we could easily show this now. So say the probability that um, say y is less than or equal to little y. So for say zero less than little y less than theta, the probability y is less than little y is equal to the probability um, let's say what it is first, is equal to little y over theta, right? Just by integrating, okay? And if we look at um, the probability, this is also equal to, if we set y equal to this, the probability theta x is less than little y is equal to the probability x is less than little y over theta, which is just equal to little y over theta. So they have the same distribution. They'll have the same PDF. Um, yes, they're, so you see this is true, okay? So think here, x is uniform on zero, one, y over theta is between zero and one. The probability x is less than this is just y over theta. This comes right from the integral, right? This is just equal to the integral zero to little y, one over theta, 
uh, DT or whatever you want to call it. So, okay, um, so you get the same thing. They have the same distribution. All right. Um, what's another one? So, um, so another one might be like, uh, say, y is exponential. Say mean equals theta. And x is exponential with mean or rate equal one. Then, um, then we can write then y equals theta x again, where theta is th thought of as a constant. Um, I know that e of theta x is equal to theta, so that's a good start. But to, do I know that um, theta x is also exponential? Uh, in fact, theta x is exponential, so we could look at it like this. The probability, say, let's show that theta x is exponential. So the probability that theta x is less than or equal to some little x here is just equal to the probability x is less than or equal to little x over theta. And this is equal to one minus e to the minus x over theta. All right. And if I take the derivative of this function to get uh, the PDF, so let's differentiate. So f theta x of little x is d d little x of 1 minus e to the minus x over theta. And this is just equal to 1 over theta e to the minus x over theta, which shows that theta x is exponential with mean equal theta. Okay, so did this differently, right? By finding the PDF. Um, the point is convince yourself of these relationships and then you can use them freely in these and other types of problems as well. Let's see, are there any others we can think of? What about, so let's put little numbers here. So, so one, Two, what else? Three, suppose we have um, y is uniform from uh, theta to theta plus one, say, or it could be plus another constant, and x is uniform zero, one. Can you think of a relationship between these two? So y would equal what x? y would equal x plus theta, right? Um, what, uh, what are some other ones? Suppose y is normal, mu sigma squared, and we usually say z normal, 0, 1 then y equals sigma z plus mu. And these, I think, we've seen these uh, before. All Actually, this one we've seen many times, right? Or in the other form where we solve for z, uh, et cetera, right? And we can go on and on. There are some problems that will exercise this. Okay. So let's see how to get a confidence interval using these type of equations, okay? So we're just going to do two examples. These come from Mathematical Statistics by Dennis Wackerly. Um, and we will look at these two examples. So suppose, um, so example one. Suppose... Uh, Let's say y 
is a single observation from a uniform zero theta. Okay, and we want to find, let's see, uh, let's find a lower bound for theta. Find um, theta hat L. Okay, so in terms of Y, so that probability that theta is greater than theta hat L, if you want to think of this like theta is in the interval theta hat L to infinity, we can have these infinite uh, sided um, confidence intervals easy extension. So the probability that theta is in here is equal to, and then just pick what you want. So let's do uh, 9.95. Okay, so we have a single Y, maybe it's 20 or something, and we want to find a lower bound for theta, the upper bound of Y, a lower bound for the upper bound. Yes, that's what it is. So maybe we'd make a picture here of the number line here, and we have a y here, and we know y is less than theta. And we are looking, so this is true, true theta, and we are looking for theta hat L, so that the probability true theta is greater than theta hat L, is 0.95. Now, I could take theta hat L equal to Y, and then I would have a 100% chance that theta hat, theta is greater than, right? If we were to pick theta hat L equal to Y, then I know theta is, is in here. That would be one. But the idea is we're willing to sacrifice a little um, probability to be wrong, maybe some rarely, um, and if we can um, move this closer to the true theta, which would be to the right of y, certainly, unless we get very unlucky and y is right, right at the uh, edge. Okay, so this is the idea. Well, one thing to keep in mind is that um, well, we're going to use we're going to use which one here? We're going to use um, one, right? But we're going to use uh, zero one, and it can be a little confusing how to use it. But basically, I want some threshold where the probability is ninety five percent that x is to the right of that point. So but I can't usually tell whether it's the right side or the left side when I start this, because depending on what you're doing, it's going to be flip around or something like this. So I think all you need to do is just try one and see if it works with my suggestion. By the way, several types of distributions or, or you know, functions of, of um, samples will not have simple uh, relationships like this with known distributions. So it doesn't always work either. So you are, you're learning this, you can reference this, look things up, but um, this is where it is. Okay, so to do the problem, let's say we know, let's try that we know probability X, which is uniform zero one. So maybe we say let X be uniform zero one. And the probability X is now, I don't need, I don't even, I'm not even going to worry about it. Let's just say X is greater than um, 0.95 or let's say 0.05, 1 over 20 is equal to 0.95, right? This is equal to what we want. So pick something that gives you the probability you want. Okay. And now I can say, but what is probability? What is x? 
So this says the probability since y equals theta x, y equals theta x, x equals y over theta, right? So this is the probability y over theta. And I think I can see already this is not right. 1 over 20, which is equal to the probability theta, is less than cross multiplying 20y is equal to 0.95. So I just found here a, an upper bound for, um, for theta hat. Okay, that's okay. Just have to do the other one. So I know the other one, what the other one's going to be. Okay, didn't work. This gave an upper bound. So this gave theta hat u an upper bound for theta such. So I know, for example, the probability theta less than theta hat u equal to 20y is equal to 0.95. Okay, so if I get a y, I multiply it by 20, um, I'm going to say that the probability that, well, the probability that theta is less than that number is usually true. It's true 90, with 95% probability. Okay, let's try the other one. So this, to get the lower bound, flip it. So to get theta hat L, let's say that the probability X is less than 19 over 20 is equal to 0.95. which is equal to the probability y over theta is less than 19 over 20, which is equal to the probability theta is greater than cross multiplying 20 19 times y. So this is my theta hat L. And this, you can see, we have moved, we have shifted, we have scaled the y. So I'm gonna redraw this picture here. I have y here. I know the true theta is to the right, or maybe exactly y, very unlikely, probably to the right. And I want my theta L. I'm gonna make this theta hat L and say here's theta. And this is 20 19ths. So this is also 20 over 19 times y. That, that brings me to the right, the right amount. So the probability that the true theta is in here, is in here all the way forever, this probability is 95%. Okay. By in here, I mean in there. Let's try to, let's use a color here. So. Notice this is a true, true probability statement. You don't have to get funny with words like confidence. As long as Y is not yet observed, is still considered a random variable, okay? So Y is the random part, and this is valid statement based on the assumptions. Okay, um, if y is observed, then I get an actual number. But just think, y was observed. Do I know where y was observed? No. So I don't know for sure once y is observed, and this is computed, theta hat l is computed, I don't know for sure if theta is greater than that. I only know that generally, or you know, before it's computed, that it has a 95% chance of being so. 
So this is where the word confidence replaces or substitutes for probability. Okay, so suppose, so let's just use this language. So suppose Y is observed, is seen to be, I don't know, um, let's pick something easy like 80. 80 is not that easy, but so then theta hat L is um, 1600, is it? 1600 over 19, right? I don't know what that is. Um, I can look it up. Eighty four point two one. So theta hat L eighty four point two one. Here I have Y, which is eighty. And say you get an observation of eighty. You're saying you're ninety five percent sure. So the true theta has to be out here somewhere, and you're saying you are. 95% sure it's here. But technically, you can't use this constant anymore to say it's 95% out here. It's somewhere. You don't know where it is. This event was random and observed, so you don't know where it happened. Um, you just know it was observed because you don't know where it happened in the, in the scheme of things because you don't know theta. But still, you, are, you say you are 95% confident That theta is theta is in here. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's um let's continue with uh one more example. Um and and I think that will do it. Um yeah, so actually any of those examples can be done like this. Um Maybe this is enough, uh, or maybe we can do a quick example now, do the, the next example. So suppose, so for example two, try to do this a little quicker. Um, suppose we have y uh, exponential with mean equal theta. Okay, and we want to find um, theta hat L, Theta hat u, so probability um, theta less than theta hat l equals probability theta greater than theta hat u is equal to, uh, let's say, 1 over 20, right? 0. 0.05. So this will give me some kind of centered, this will give leads to, so theta hat l, theta hat u will be a centered 90% confidence interval where we expect to miss uh, theta in these intervals roughly one out of 10 times and roughly the same amount of times on the left and the right. Okay, so we showed already that x exponential one then implies that y can be written as theta times x. Okay, and now I know I need both, so I won't need to waste too much time here. If x is exponential 1, I'll need this point here, in which this probability here is 0.05, right? 1 over 20. And I'll need an x out here, so that this probability here is also 1 over 20. So let's call those B1 and B2. And this is just equal to the, um, these are just quantiles. You can use the R commands. B1 is uh, quantile EXP. Remember, R uses the rates. Um, and I would put in 0 0.051. And it doesn't matter here. They're the same, but the rate and the mean. 
and B2 would be 0.95, um, one. And these are not terribly hard to find anyway. We can get exact answers for these, right? We need we know that we want um, the probability, say, that X is greater than B1 is equal to e to the minus rate times b1. The rate is 1, so it's e to the minus b1. And we want this equal to uh, greater than 1 over 20, so we want this equal to 19. I'm sorry, we want the probability x is greater than b1 to be 19 over 20. So this leads to b1 is equal to ln 20 over 19. Similarly, the probability x is greater than b2 equals e to the minus b2 equals 1 over 20. So b2 equals ln of 20. This is These are approximately, not exactly, but pretty close. This is 0.05 or 1 over 20. And this is uh, about 3. Let's put 3.0. It's 2.997 or something like that. Okay, so we'll just use those easy numbers since it doesn't matter. It's just to demonstrate this. Okay, we're almost there then. So we know the probability X is between. So, so the probability X is between B1 and B2 will be 90% and it's centered. So the probability B1 less than X, but X is equal to Y over theta, right? Y over theta is less than b2 is just equal to the probability multiply by or let's take reciprocals it's the probability 1 over b2 is less than theta over y is less than 1 over b1 or is equal to the probability y over b2 is less than theta, is less than y over b1, where uh, b1 and b2 are given here, and y is the single sample. So you have found your results. Uh, for example, if say y is equal to, I don't know, what should the mean be, say a mean of uh, three, then the, uh, the centered 90% confidence interval is three over B2, so one, and 3 over 0 0.05, which is roughly 60. So pretty wide interval, right? It's actually fairly likely that if the mean was 60, you may get a number close to three. So, I mean, this is the, this is the way it works with exponentials. And um, it's a wide interval, but also we are just doing it based on a single sample with no information uh, a priori about theta. Okay, so it's quite wide, but it's not bad. I have sort of ruled out all numbers bigger than 60 for theta um, and all numbers smaller than one with 95% probability based on a single sample of three. Okay, thanks very much. This was lecture seven. We will continue next time.